Hello, I'm Shelley Quinn. I'm J.D. Quinn. And we welcome you to 3ABN Family yeah. Worship. We are so glad you're joining us mm -hmm. to bring in the Sabbath. And I don't know about you, but everyone here at 3ABN, and I'm sure you as well, our lives have so many distractions and you're so busy and the Sabbath rolls around and it's just like, <sighs> ah, a breath of fresh air. Well, tonight we will be talking about the joy of repentance. You heard me right. The joy of repentance. But before we begin, honey, do you want to introduce our oh, yes. three Abian family? Some of, the our, table? some of our favorite people, you know. It's just uh, three Abian is a special place. There's special mm -hmm. people here, and it's a joy to come to work every day. And may we may uh, just slowly leave every day because we put in long days here. <laughs> and I wouldn't trade it for anything. At the end of the table, I work with Donald. Right. Donald, he's in pastoral, and I work with Donald and his precious wife, Janelle. She's in graphics. The she's, Owens. Yes, she's a busy, Always busy Owens. girl. Always Owens. Yes. <laughs> and then we have Curtis and Dara. In 25 words or less, what do you do? Here, three ABM. <laughs> yes, because you are a busy, busy man. Production coordinator. Uh, also do some producing. Schedule all the programs here. Schedule the studio. Schedule the crew. Take care of housing. Take care of guests as they come in. You, yes. you wear a lot of I hats. I wear a lot of hats. Yeah. yeah, but it's all worth it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Dara, what do you do? I work in programming, um, scheduling the shows on. on uh, for on-air broadcasts. Yes, for the TV and then for radio, I do editing and oh, scheduling wow. for radio. I didn't know you did the radio as well. Mm, See, yes. we learn each. Yes. We all wear so many hats That's around right. here. It's kind of funny <laughs> when somebody asks what you do. It's like, well, <laughs> what Pretty don't sorry. you do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, as I said, we are so glad that you, the rest of our three Abian family, are joining us. Tonight we will talk about the joy of repentance. You're probably familiar with the story in 2 Samuel 11 when King David, who was a man after God's own heart, he had committed really a heinous sin. Mm -hmm. God sent Nathan to him. David had had an adulterous affair with Bathsheba and then saw that her husband was killed. So. In 2 Samuel 12, when, when God in his mercy sends his prophet to David, David repents. And it, it, it kind of reads like you think, okay, so Nathan tells him of this problem and God forgives him. But in between those sentences comes Psalm 51. David repented. David knew the joy of repentance. If you ever want to know how to repent, read through Psalm 51. It's a very tender but intense record of his confession and repentance. What is the joy of repentance? Let me give you two um, scriptures from Psalm 51. In verse 2, David understood. He says, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse my sin. He was looking for his righteousness to re be restored by faith in God. And then he said in verse seven, wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Mm -hmm. The joy of repentance is coming to a loving God and knowing that he has a plan to forgive your sin, to bring you into, restore that relationship with him. We're going to look at five steps to repentance tonight. First, there is the recognition of sin. If you don't know you're sinning, you can't go forward. So recognition of sin. Then there's the godly sorrow when God makes you recognize, ooh, I'm so sorry that I'm hurting you this way. Mm -hmm. Then there's confession, which I always say confession is the clearing house of the conscience. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the most important step, step four, that some people often, mm -hmm. they, they have a hard time doing this. You've got to receive God's forgiveness because when he forgives you, if you don't accept it, you can go on feeling guilt and burdened and then we change our conduct. So 
what we'd like to do, honey. You want to open with prayer? Yes. Fathers, we come together this uh, wonderful day that you created, Lord. We mm -hmm. give you all praise and all glory. Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you, Lord, for this Sabbath. And Father, I just ask, Lord, that we all be, we all rid of the stuff that, that's not becoming to us. Father, thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, that the Holy Spirit is mm -hmm. there to remind us mm -hmm. this is not where you belong. This is the better road. Mm -hmm. And Father, that we have ears to hear and we follow your leading. So Father, be with each one of us tonight. We, we just ask to be emptied of self, filled with you, so that we can have a clear view of how wonderful you truly are. We love you and thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Okay, so nothing is assigned. You guys just jump in as you've got comments. Recognition of sin. How do we recognize our sin? A lot of times for me, it's um, prompting of the Holy Spirit because I feel guilty. Amen. Okay, that's absolutely. Ditto, ditto. Yeah. yeah. On the same page right there. So you get that little, almost a knot in your stomach, yeah. like you know you've done wrong and there's, mm -hmm. there's trouble behind it because of it. Amen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which I guess is a good sign. Isn't yes, it? it is. You know, I just thank daily uh, for the Holy Spirit because, you know, somebody used to say this all the time and I, I first I just kind of, excuse me, Lord, but rebuked it because I didn't like the way he was saying it. Mm -hmm. But the Holy Spirit is my best friend. And I thought, how can you say that? And you know, today I can joyfully say the Holy Spirit is my best friend. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, mm -hmm. so I have matured a little bit, I guess you might yes. say. But uh, what would we do without the Holy Spirit to be there to remind us? Mm -hmm. uh -oh. But we're using the word remind. What's another way? If There may be people out there who are saying, I don't feel that prompting. How, what is another way that we recognize our sins? Does it start with the C? It starts with the Word of yeah, God. Oh, amen. See. I mean, you have to examine yourself in light of the Word of God. Mm -hmm. I think, too, that you have to know who God is. I think if you don't oh, know absolutely. who God is, then how do you know you're sinning? Mm -hmm. I think it's really important that then you know, okay, like what, uh, you know, Romans 7 talks about this with, you know, how he saw the law. We're not going to go too deep in it, but the law, and he realized that he was sinning. So, you know, in order to know the law, you're going to have to read the Word of God. Amen. So you understand what the truth is. So you know God is, and he wants to deliver you of that sin. I think Amen. even before a person mm -hmm. knows God, there's a measure of um, what, right and wrong. Amen. And, you know, Amen. It's like God puts that in us. And so until we realize that it's actually God trying to get our attention to show us that we're on the wrong path, we might not even realize that it's him. You know, I, I like that because God has a moral code of love. Yes. And when he first created us, that moral code of love was Very really amen. deep within us. Mm -hmm. And yeah. once sin entered, we kind of broke that. But mm -hmm. it's interesting what you said, because we've had missionaries here who've mm -hmm. been to places in Africa where they never heard the word of God mm -hmm. and the people are basically following all of the Ten Commandments, and it's just that moral code. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there's something special. Uh, Romans 3:23. We all know this one. Mm -hmm. All have sinned and fallen short of the mm -hmm. glory of God. But, but, mm -hmm. but what? The gift of God yes. is eternal, eternal life, life in Christ Jesus. Jesus. Yes. When, when we're all sinners, and and sometimes people will say. Well, I don't really break any of the big 10. I guarantee you, you get in and start reading and you yeah. start reading. One day I was reading along and then you come to how much God hates it mm. when you backbite mm -hmm. or you gossip. Mm -hmm. How many of us are guilty of that? Mm -hmm. I mean, we all, you know, and maybe we don't do it among one another, but we might do it spouse to spouse. Mm -hmm. Do you know what so-and-so did? And blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. God hates that kind mm -hmm. of thing. So. What we've got to do, and, and you're going to be surprised when I say this, but when you recognize your sin, rejoice mm. in recognizing your sin because that means God's getting ready to do something for you. Who would like to read Micah 7, 18 and 19? Micah 7, 
18 and 19. A when, small book. When, when we understand how much mm -hmm. God delights in mercy, when we understand that He is ready, He stands ready to forgive us. Micah 7, 18 and 19, it makes it like, oh yes, Lord, thank you for showing me this this mm. deficit in my life. So yeah. what does Micah 7, 18 and 19 say? Dara? Who is a God like you, pardoning iniquity and passing over the transgression of the raiment of his heritage? He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in mercy. Mm -hmm. He will again have compassion on us and will subdue our iniquities. You will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. Amen. I mean, Amen. what a God. And the God of the Old Testament is the same as the God of the New Testament. He was just as loving and patient with them as he is today. Yeah. But when you think about that, what, so, so when you recognize sin, what's the next step? Usually when God shows us something, he brings something about. I call it step two. What is that? It's godly sorrow. Yeah, the sorrow. Maybe it's acknowledging that you're wrong and feeling guilty about it. I think that um, when you're saying it, we're just kind of backtracking. We we're talking about this idea of this, um, how we, you know, the idea of our iniquities, cast our sins in the, the depths of the sea. What came to my mind was Lamentations 3:22. It says, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because His compassions fail not. Amen. Oh, I like that. And then the next one says, they are new every morning. And that's His has said. And yeah. we're going to get to that because yeah. that's part of receiving mm. His forgiveness is, is knowing that God does have these new mercies. Right. But the godly sorrow, somebody read a 2 Corinthians 7.10. Mm. 2 Corinthians 7.10. I'll read it. For godly sorrow produces repentance leading to salvation, not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. Okay, let's talk about that. What's the difference between godly sorrow and the sorrow of the world? I think for me, when I'm, I'm reading this, godly sorrow, it's like, I believe that you have a, a, you're beginning to understand what was paid for that sin, that something was laid down, a life was laid down. That's for good. That. For that sin. So you see that for godly sorrow work with repentance. So you're realizing that you owe a debt, but mm. somebody's paid it for you. Mm. So that brings like, wow, it's like, how can I not? You know, I want to repent because of that. Amen. That's really good. Mm -hmm. And then how many of us have experienced worldly sorrow? Mm. What is worldly sorrow? Yeah. It's it says it produces death. That's when you get you know, I don't think God, I think it's yeah. the devil that tries to make us mm -hmm. feel guilty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't you? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's the devil that puts that guilt burden. And mm -hmm. what do you do when you feel guilty around somebody? Let's say you run into somebody in the store and you see them coming down the aisle and you're feeling guilty. What do you want to do? Them. You avoid them. <laughs> you stay avoid away. them. You try to go to yeah. the next aisle. So, so <laughs> what the devil wants to do when you do recognize a sin he wants to make you feel so guilty. And how many times in pastoral do you hear this? Oh, yes. Mm. You know, mm. it's like you, they want to avoid God because they feel guilty. Mm. Right. But what God wants you, us mm. to do is what you just said. I love that, mm. is recognize I have paid the penalty for your sin debt. Return to me. Mm. What, what is repentance? We didn't even, what is repentance? Somebody want to define it? I think. I think it's being so so sorry for what you did that you're willing to change. Mm, that's that's good. good. Yeah. That's yeah. good. Mm -hmm. Donald? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that repentance, like I said, is realizing that um, you can of yourself not clean yourself. Mm -hmm. You can't do anything for yourself. You've come to that point where you you have to depend like what Jacob had to fall on that angel. So I'm not going to let go of you to mm -hmm. bless me. He was mm -hmm. going to cleanse him. So we can't of ourselves clean ourselves. But. You know, here's here's how. I would describe it. Repentance, I'm headed in the wrong way. Mm -hmm. I'm headed towards sin. And then God gets my attention. He brings this godly sorrow. I mean, I recognize my sin. He brings the godly sorrow. Repentance is to turn away from sin mm -hmm. to God. Mm -hmm. 
Right. So it's a it's a 180, 180 degree mm -hmm. turn. Right. You're turning from one direction to faith in God, knowing that He paid the penalty for your sin. So, so read Romans two four. Let me just say this before sure. you go there, because acknowledging that you're wrong is a powerful emotion. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'll tell you, you're reaching down deep to say, you know, boy, have I mm -hmm. uh, an extraordinarily powerful when it comes from your heart. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. and, you know, there, there's superficial, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there's, you know, wow, please forgive me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know. think also too, with what you guys are saying, it makes me think of, you know, when we do something over and over and we see what's going to happen and we see the results of bad choices, okay, I don't want to go down that road mm. again. I know where that's going to lead. We've been there. Mm. God shows us that he has something better. And it's just, you know, that verse that we read too is through um, godly sorrow leads to salvation and then the sorrow of the world produces death. So it's like Repentance is productive, yes, freeing. and yeah. this, the, yeah, mm -hmm. the, the sorrow of the world it produces freeing. death. But God's repentance is, is productive for our Amen. salvation. And Amen. Amen. So it's healthy for us. Yeah. Right. It feels good. It's oh a feel my. good. We all like to feel good. Right. You ever, mm -hmm. you ever watch the uh, movie Pilgrim's Progress? He got this big flappy thing on his back, and he's like, "Oh, this thing's so heavy." Yeah. He's trying to walk through, and he's going through this path, and he finally finds the cross. Mm -hmm. He falls behind us and all the ropes and stuff come off and the thing just falls. He's like, oh. And it might not necessarily feel good at first, but eventually it does. Yeah. It's, that's mm -hmm. that, you know, the bittersweet. It's just, it's just like keep continuing to put rocks in your backpack. They just get heavier and heavier. Mm -hmm. and you just yeah. kind of just go along with it till finally it wears you out. Yeah. I want to connect what the two of you said. When, when you're talking about doing something over and over again, and then acknowledging it, you finally get there. We knew and counseled with a, a couple, and he had committed adultery. I mean, he was a freewheeling man. He'd been committed, had several affairs, and his wife knew. Mm. He could not believe that, well, actually, he didn't even recognize, he didn't really feel like it was anything bad at first. But she loved him so much, and he finally recognized his sin, and he acknowledged his sin, and he changed because he mm. turned to the Lord. Mm. But that's like, what do they say? If you keep doing the same thing, expecting a different result, that's a definition of insanity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this godly sorrow produces repentance, leading to salvation. What does Romans 2, 4 say? Romans 2, 4, and it's there on your, it's on yeah. your syllabus. You don't oh. have to I have to read this because I, I just love this verse, so I have to, re okay. <laughs> okay. I have to read it. Do it. Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? Amen. Mm. Yeah, I just, I just read something we've been doing in our pastoral uh, worship, the uh, Our Father Cares. This was, I think, a, um, anyways, it was a really good read. It said, repentance toward God and faith in Jesus Christ are the fruits of the renewing power of the grace of the Spirit. Repentance um, represents the process by which the soul seeks to reflect the image of Christ to the world. That's I thought that good. was really beautiful how that connected with this idea. So it's that goodness that of God that leads you to repentance, but because you, you want to give back what God's given, you want to reflect and give that to other people. Do you remember when the man called Jesus good and he said, why do you call me good? Mm -hmm. Only God is good. Mm -hmm. I once, I remember how this, I was in college and I'm reading this and I'm thinking, what do you mean God, only God is good? Everybody always told me what a good person I was and I was mm. so helpful and I taught Sunday school and I did this, that and the other. And you know what? I was, I had gone back to school. I was probably about 26 and I'm saying, Lord, you're going to have to explain this. If I'm not good, just show me. Uh-oh. <laughs> I mean, he kept me up all night long, just like a replay of, of my life, showing me things that I just felt like a worm afterwards. Mm. And it was things that 
you just don't even recognize that. And I was repentant, let me mm -hmm. tell you. But it's the goodness of God, right. it's His love Amen. that leads us. So we have to recognize our sin, mm -hmm. then we have to feel that. I mean, some people know they're living in sin, they could care less because mm -hmm. they don't know the goodness mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. So they come to the godly sorrow. What's step three? Confession. Is our next critical Confession. Step? Confession. So, Psalm 66, 18, someone. We got it. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. So what does that say to you? <laughs> yeah. If you're not really giving it up, <laughs> the Lord's not going to listen. And that's yeah. really what yeah, yeah. it's saying. Yeah. Right, if right. I yeah. have a cherished sin mm -hmm. and uh, it gets tough, mm -hmm. it's one thing, oh, well, I, I don't like that. I don't like that incident anyway. You know, that's mm -hmm. easy. But boy, there's some things that are really good mm -hmm. in your opinion, our opinion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And uh, so, and so iniquity. When God shows us, when you understand it's iniquity, that it's a sin, that it's against Him. All sin is essentially against Him. If you hold on to that, and you're saying, "Lord, okay, I'll just make this up. I know I'm a thief. You know, I'm stealing little things from work. I know that you're telling me not to do that." but I need this stuff, I want this stuff, I'm gonna do it anyway. And then you're praying, is God listening to that request? Not unless it's, mm -hmm. you know, God always answers prayer. Mm -hmm. The answer's always yes to a spiritual matter, but he's not even mm -hmm. listening to your prayer requests if you won't let go of something he's showing you. I mean, that's, yeah. whoa. And I'll take another word, you know, you express your regret. Mm -hmm. you know, that's what, you, yeah. That's what uh, you, you're. I think you're taking you're ownership. That's kind of what you're saying. You're taking ownership, kind of yeah. what we see in the beginning of the Garden Eden. You know, you know what Adam said. Well, it's this woman that you made. That's why I ate the fruit. You know, you made it for. Her. But then he finally said, "I did eat." But the thing is, I think that idea is what you're going to is that we have to admit or own up to yeah. what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's always a two-way street. Like. Mm -hmm. He wants you to be better, but you also have to want to be better with him so that you can yeah. meet yeah, in the middle. Right. Exactly. And that's with everything, because the longer you stay in sin, the longer you stay away from him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, you, you have to, it has, it's on both sides. So and and there's a joy way. to confession. Mm -hmm. it, actually, each one of these steps ends up bringing joy. Somebody read First John. Uh, this is one of my favorite Bible passages in the whole Bible. First oh, yeah. John 1, 7 through 9. Donald? If we walk in the light as He is in the light, the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. Hallelujah. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. Boy, that puts us all on the same plane, doesn't it? <laughs> and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Oh. Mm. I, mean, I, think the yeah. thing, I think the thing that I appreciate the way that John is writing this, mm. if, because mm -hmm. we do have a choice. Uh -huh. He's using the biggest two letter things. word there yes. is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we walk in the light, mm -hmm. if we say that we yeah. have, if, yeah. if we confess our sins. Yep. So, you know, the ball's in your court. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I also like the way that this says, um, he is faithful and just to forgive us our Amen. sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. But up, up, up above it says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. So he won't, rec he will forgive you of everything that you confess. But if you're holding on to something, that part, that particular sin is not forgiven. I yeah. know. And, <laughs> and who doesn't want to be clean? You know, what is righteousness? Righteous, well, first of all, God, his character, God's nature is unselfish love, but his care, God is love. But the Bible also says God is light. His character is righteous. He cannot sin. It means he is totally separated from sin. And righteousness, when it's talking about us, it's to be in right standing with God, but it's more than just right standing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. right doing, it's right, right doing acting. Mm -hmm. It's doing things according to God's way. And you know what? Once you've sinned, which we're all sinners, we mm -hmm. just read that. 
there's no way you can restore your righteousness. Isaiah 64, 6 says that your righteousness, the best you can do, is like a filthy rag before the Lord. I was just thinking what David wrote here in Psalm 51, verse 3, for I acknowledge my transgression, my transgressions and my sin is ever before. So it's constantly there. I was just thinking about, you know, a family member who uh, he's had some abusive things happen to him, but he's, he has this bitterness and this anger and he won't let it go. So it's really just zapping his life. It's ruining his health. And I'm just thinking about, we're talking about the joy of repentance. It's like it, it frees you so you can have better health. It frees you so you can have peace. It frees you so you can have joy. And yeah. Just doing the opposite yeah. of that does right. the opposite of that. Right, right. <laughs> exactly. It's heavy. You know, when I well, can... I could do choose one or two or <laughs> A or B. I mean, it's multiple <laughs> choice there. Yeah. Behind door A, behind door yeah. B, you yeah. know. Yeah. But what, when mm -hmm. I pray and I'm confessing my sin, and I'll tell you, you should confess. If you can't, somebody, I told somebody once I was teaching in, in a church in Texas and I commented on daily confession. And this guy came up to me and he said, honey, you don't understand grace if you think you have to daily confess. And I said, let me tell you about the everlasting covenant of God. And I, when I confess, we can sin against the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. We can resist him when he's prompting us. We can grieve him. We can even quench him. So I confess that on some days if I'm not really, I'm always aware of something I'm doing. But I always confess my sin and then I say, oh, thank you, Lord. Righteousness is by faith. Thank you that you've cleansed me of all unrighteousness. What? A, mm -hmm. Can you imagine being in a pigsty and you're covered with has anybody ever been around a pig farm? Mm -hmm. we, we passed by one the other day. Woo! Very disgusting. Mm -hmm. Rank, mm -hmm. rank. Especially in the summertime. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and you course. think about being covered with all of this junk, and all of a sudden the blood of Jesus has cleansed you of all sin. He's forgiven you and cleansed you of all unrighteousness. You're squeaky clean. I think it's exciting. You, you remind me, uh, uh, last year, you know, I had this this weight hanging over me it was called student loans. I was like, oh my goodness, I have, so I'm doing all this stupid stuff just to s even try to get money somehow to pay it off. I'm doing dumb things and I'm like, okay, I've got to fix this somehow. I've got to make this happen because I know to me things are happening so fast. I don't want debt. I'm going to get out. So I'm praying, Lord, I want to get rid of this debt. So God had, uh, through the opportunity to do this loan forgiveness stuff, I got right on my birthday, uh, I got where it said, your student loans are forgiven. And it was like, oh, that, that, that weight of that student loan being lifted off me was just so like, oh my, it was so freeing. I was like, man, I was so much peace. I was, I was like so happy. I was, of course, dancing, saying it's my birthday, happy birthday kind of thing. But yeah. anyway, just the fact was, it was, it was so huge. It was amazing. When you get that weight lifted off, you're just like, whoa, you can breathe. It's just like, oh. So when you putting that into perspective, we've got a sin debt none right. of us can pay. Right, exactly. There's no way that you can pay your sin debt. <laughs> God had to become a human being yes. and die for us to pay for it. You have a sentence here, Shelley, yeah. and it's got an exclamation mark following it. Uh-oh. So this is, this is good stuff if it does. One great reward of confession is confidence. A clear conscience gives us confidence before God. Mm -hmm. Man, now that's good stuff right there. Yeah. Because that's what we all want. So read this first, quiet, quietness and confidence. Read First John three twenty one then. Beloved, once again, if yes. beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence toward God. Mm. I think you find the same thing in Romans one, something like that, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah, and we find. No? We but, also. But here, if our heart does not condemn us, that means we have freedom. Amen. We have confidence toward God. Thank you, Jesus. And when you get rid of that uncleanness, that unrighteousness, mm -hmm. that debt, yeah. it's like the confidence we can have in Christ, 1 John 5, 10 through 12, is that as long as we are in Christ, and that means we're abiding, we're maintaining a relationship. Do we sin? Absolutely. Anybody that says they don't sin, it, it, what did the, what we just it's read a is a liar mm -hmm. and the truth is not in them. But he... He's not going to take you and say, okay, I'm through with you. You've sinned. If you're in a relationship with the Lord, what he does, he helps you recognize your sin. He brings that godly sorrow. You confess 
and he's, resto he's restoring you mm -hmm. every step you of the way. And you talk about confidence. First John 5, 10 says, if we're in Christ, we have assurance of salvation. As long as you're re maintaining that relationship versus, with the Lord. Versus conflict. Oh, that's good. Oh, my goodness. You know, boy, if you've got a conflicted mind, uh, it's, it's nuts. Mm -hmm. You're just all over the place. Do I or do I not? Do I? Do I? And you spend the rest of the day just going back and forth. You know, it's that conflict in our mind. So, but if your heart's not condemning you, the good news is, is that we have confidence toward God. That's that quietness and confidence that yes. we were talking about. Yeah. It gives you that trust to know that you can go to him with anything. Amen. You know, listen. I think, Amen. I think on top of what you're saying is it lets you realize your value as his child. Amen. Amen. When you get that, it's, it's, that's, to me, that's the confidence. You're like, wow, I am his child. And he Amen. wants to clean me up. So, Amen. you know, he's the potter, we're the clay. He wants to fix us. And so Amen. you get that confidence when you realize your value in him. I'm right going to tell a story that, Somebody at home may please just forgive me and go with this story. Mm. Uh oh. We had two little Yorkies. We lived on a farm mm. in in central Texas, and I would let them out. And the cows, you know, cows eat alfalfa, and there's something about the cow patties is what we call them there. Mm. That one of my little Yorkies just found irresistible. Oh, that's and he would go out there and just roll around in it. And then here he is at the door wanting in. <laughs> now, okay. did I tell him, shame on you, go clean yourself up? I knew he couldn't. <laughs> what I did was I disappointed that I'd pick him up and I'd lovely, I'd lovingly take him in and I'd scrub him with soap and water and clean him up. And then we could have restored fellowship. I wasn't picking him up and cling, clinging him to my yeah, bosom. Yeah, yeah. I was picking him up like, oh, yuck, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and I well. think of that. It's kind of like the confidence we have before God mm. is when he cleans us up and our conscience, we can just go lay our head mm -hmm. on his bosom and be so close to him. Mm. Mm. Amen. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And the key in that is he is the one that cleans mm -hmm. you. Amen. Right, right. Same. Your dog didn't clean itself. Amen. You cleaned your dog. So God exactly cleans right. Us. Good right. point. Amen and amen. Good point. Yeah. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the greatest challenge is to step four, mm. receive <laughs> God's mm. forgiveness. But mm. this is the most important step. Once you've recognized your sin, that godly sorrow has come in. You've confessed your sin. Guess what? God has cast it away. You got to receive it because how many of us, mm -hmm. just let me ask you, have any of you ever been through that where something you did in the past comes back up again mm -hmm. and it's like it's all over again. You're feeling it and you, it's, you keep confessing it before mm -hmm. the Lord. Mm -hmm. H have you experienced oh, that? Yes. Yeah. Definitely. You know what causes that? We didn't receive his forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And remember, I had a little lady that was that called here a lot when I first came to 3ABN. She'd had an abortion. She was probably close to 90, but she'd had an abortion mm -hmm. when she was younger. She couldn't forgive herself right, for it. Yep, mm -hmm. And I finally told her, mm -hmm. do you think you're greater than God? Did, she'd confessed it. I said, have you confessed it over and over again? And I said, do you think you're greater than God? She said, what do you mean? And I said, God has forgiven you. You've wow. got to receive that forgiveness mm -hmm. or you can't go on with right. life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's look at, I want somebody, this, when, when you receive God's forgiveness, this is how you disarm the devil because he's going to try to bring you down in quicksand mm -hmm. like that poor little lady if you don't. Mm -hmm. But remember the story of the creditor in, the, in Luke chapter 7. Jesus is telling the story of the creditor and two debtors. One owed a little, one a lot. And Jesus is talking about this forgiveness. Somebody read Luke 747, dynamite scripture. Mm -hmm. Christ concluded, therefore I say to you, 
Her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. Mm. Mm. So Jesus is sitting here talking about, because this is when Mary was pouring the alabaster box on his feet and mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. And he's saying, okay, one just owes a little debt and one owes a lot. Who do you think is going to love me more? And the man says, well, the one who was forgiven a lot. We had a lady come to 3ABN and she actually said, I never knew what was the big deal about Jesus dying on the cross. Mm. She said, wasn't that big of a deal to me? She said, I don't break the Ten Commandments. See, until we recognize our sin, mm -hmm. until we recognize oh. our condition, we don't have a great need for the Savior. Mm -hmm. But God woke her up and she recognized, I mean, you know, she thought she'd been brought up in the church, kept mm -hmm. all of His commandments, and she recognized who she was. And you know what? When you realize how much God has forgiven you, we love him because he first loved us, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was just thinking, you know, when you were saying it, when I seen a story is sometimes we don't appreciate the price that was laid down for our sins. Amen. That, that Jesus did lay, I was reading in John 10, you know, that the shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And this is the creator of the entire universe. Amen. He steps down to be like one of us and he says, I'm going to die in your place. That, how can you not appreciate something like that when Amen. your creator says, I'm going to die for you? But you created me. Why would you? Yeah. So, yeah, well, I think that we can uh, overstep and think we don't, we don't really appreciate what was laid down for us. Mm. We don't. Like we the humility. Know. So, in other words, yeah. we don't really truly understand the value of our life. Right. Correct. Yep, exactly. That's yeah, probably it. Yep. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I never even thought about that before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and right. we don't, you know, when you were talking earlier about appreciating being a child of God, mm -hmm. Somebody out there, you've heard someone has been told, you're worthless. Mm -hmm. You're worthless. You're no good. Let me tell you something. God says you are worth nothing less mm -hmm. than the price that he paid for you, First mm -hmm. Peter 1, 18 and Amen. 19. Mm -hmm. with not, you were redeemed not with silver and gold and perishable things, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ as a lamb without mm -hmm. a spot. Right. I, I, every day, you can ask JD, I mean, every time I'm praying, that's probably my first act of thanksgiving mm -hmm. is, thank you for saving me. I know I could never mm -hmm. save myself. Mm -hmm. Thank you that righteousness wow. is by faith. Thank you, Lord, that you were humbled yourself to become a man. That's almost beyond our comprehension, yeah. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Look, let's go back to what you first started with. Now, okay. Lamentations, what? Three, twenty-three. 23. 23. Mm -hmm. Now would be a good time to bring that up, you know, mm. because here, uh, what are we, where are we putting our values? Mm -hmm. Right. So now, what uh, what did you say now? So oh. you're opening your heart to receive His gift of forgiveness, mm -hmm. and I think Donald's going to read for us Lamentations, three yeah. twenty-three. You know, the importance of this this uh, whole thing with Lamentations and realizing that God did something. Um, boy, it's amazing. 22 says, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are, this word's big, not consumed. Amen. That means, to me, that means extinguished, done, gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but his compassions fail not. I love that. 23 says, they are new every morning. Every day you wake up, you got breath of life. You, mm. Great is thy faithfulness. That's just a beautiful thing. And I think verse 24 too, the Lord is my portion, save my soul, therefore I will hope in him. You know, when it says that, his mercies are new. You know what the word is there? It's my favorite Hebrew word. Mm -hmm. It's has said, mm -hmm. and it means you can't even define it in the English. They, it's translated as love, loving kindness, grace, mercy. Mm -hmm. It's all, it's a covenant term. Right. And when you're in covenant relationship with the Lord, his has said envelops you. This grace, this love, and the interesting thing about receiving, when you actually confess your sin, receive this, it takes our focus off mm. of our own shortcomings, mm. returns our focus to this wonderful creator who said, uh, who wants to read Isaiah 43, mm. 18 and 19. These are the words of the Lord. And here's what he's saying to you at home after you confess your sins. 
Isaiah 43, 18 to 19 says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Yep. See, I am doing a new thing. Amen. Now it springs up. Do not, do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. Revival. Amen. Mm. Yeah. So if you're waking up every morning mm. with new mercies, yeah. revival. this is this newness right there. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, mm. you know, I don't want to dwell on the past. I'm no. a new creature today. Mm. Today's a new day. That's, that's what the receiving is mm. all about, is recognizing. Mm -hmm. Don't dwell on I mean, once mm -hmm. you've confessed it, it's not that you're going to come completely forget it, but you don't have to have that great heavy burden. It's, it's like, you know, uh, when you remember it, it's like, thank you, Lord, that you forgave me for mm -hmm. that. Right. It's not, the joy of repentance is, is knowing that God has forgiven you. I love Psalm 103, verse 12. He said, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. You know, he made me think about Jacob again. You know, he's running from his brother. He realized what he had done. And, you know, he separated his families and he went by himself and he's there and all of a sudden this person grabs him by the shoulder and he's wrestling with it. And he realized, you know, it was the angel of the Lord. And of course the Lord angel puts his thigh out, but he falls on him. And then he says, what is your name? He says, my name is Jacob. He said, no longer do I call you Jacob, mm -hmm. but I call you Israel because you have one favor with God and with man. So he, he doesn't have to remember that name of Jacob anymore. He's now called Israel. Amen. He's been. He, he was already, God had already chosen him mm -hmm. as he'd renewed the covenant with him. Israel is a covenant name. And what Jacob did when he was returning there, he actually, the angel of the Lord was Jesus Christ. Right. Mm -hmm. And he's wrestling with him. And he says, I will not let, you know, the angel of the Lord saying, let me go, let me go. And, J and Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And I think sometimes we all give up too soon. Have you ever right. prayed about mm -hmm. something and you gave up too mm -hmm. soon? Mm -hmm. I think we need to have mm -hmm. more of that in Jacob. Mm -hmm. Lord, I'm not going to let you and go. What, and and, and what's interesting, you know, just to tie this all together, let's go back to Lamentations 3.23. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, in the morning, Jacob, or Israel, started a new, a new walk. Mm, mm -hmm. But his mercies are new every morning. Mm. So mm. it takes our focus on what we have done, mm. and what God is doing. Amen. Amen. So, so when you receive God's forgiveness, you're not going to dwell on the past. You're going to recognize God's doing a new thing in you. Mm. He is going to make a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. So. As far as the east is from the west, he's removed our transgression. Isaiah 43, verse 25 in the Amplified. Who wants to read that? I'll read it. I, even I, am he who blots out and cancels your transgressions for my sake, and I will not remember your sins. Mm -hmm. Well, we keep going mm -hmm. back to that particular mm -hmm. scripture. I will not... Remember your sins. They'll be at the depth of the sea, as far as from the east, from the west. Yes. Mm. Keeps now going there, back there. For me, the, the, the thing to remember, and, and I just recently came to this, which I know everybody, other people know it already. It's just, I'm slow. <laughs> <laughs> but when the devil was reminding me of everything that I did wrong, if I, if I, if he reminds me of something that I've done and I've confessed it, I just have to say, thank you, Lord, for forgiving me for Amen. this. Amen. 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 That's right. And that yeah. is, it's, <laughs> it's a powerful thing to remember to yeah. do that. And you're not the only one. I think most of us, it's a journey thank to you, get Jesus. to Right, that. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Isn't it interesting in Isaiah 43, 25, that God says, I've blotted out and canceled your yes. transgressions mm -hmm. for my own for sake. For my own sake. Mm -hmm. You know, when mm -hmm. Isaiah... God commissioned Isaiah, the, you know, you look at the first 36 chapters of Isaiah and it's pretty, it's pretty heavy. He's warning them, he's getting ready, he's warning them because he's going to take them into Babylonian captivity. And then from, mm -hmm. uh, it's verse 39, and then from chapter 40 on, it gets just promise after promise after promise. Mm -hmm. It was 840 years from Sinai before God took them into Babylonian mm -hmm. activity. 
How patient is mm. God? Mm. Mm. But when he says, for my own sake, mm -hmm. see, it's God's mm -hmm. sorrow over our sin. When he says, I will not remember your sins, I've come to understand this. When God says, I will not remember, it means he's not going to act on those. When he says he forgets something, he's not going to act on it. When it says God remembers, it's not because he forgot. It's because he's ready to act. Mm -hmm. You just made me think of when you're talking about this is just jumping at me. Hebrews 12, verse 10 talks about this idea of discipline or, of course, you know, chastisement, but discipline. It says, for they, being the fathers of our earthly fathers, verily for a few days chastened us or disciplined us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness. So he's why, that's what we're kind of seeing here. He's going to cancel for his holiness. So he makes us holy. Amen, amen. I just thought, that's, man, that's, that's a beautiful thought that he does it. Dara, do you want to read, it's on page four, Micah 7, 7 mm. through 9. Okay. I will look to the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Do not rejoice over me, my enemy. When I fall, I will arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him mm. until he pleads my case and executes justice for me. He will bring me forth to the light. I will see his righteousness. Amen. 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 I will see that. Isn't that what you Holiness. were just saying a while ago? Mm -hmm. It's like when the devil comes at you, you're right. going, do not rejoice over me. Uh, you know, I, I, enemy, because God brings you up. I love this part. Let's talk about that just a second. It says, I will bear his indignation because I've sinned against him until he pleads my, my case, case. Mm -hmm. and executes justice for me. What is the ministry of our risen and exalted Savior? Mm, He's our advocate. He intercedes mm -hmm. yeah. for us yeah. before the throne, day and night. He's pleading our mm -hmm. case. Did you know that your judge is also your advocate, your attorney? Mm -hmm. your we can't lose. Your brother and your friend, too. <laughs> your brother, I mean, all the way around. So, so we see that you can receive the forgiveness of the Lord mm -hmm. and just say, hey, when I fall, I will arise. Enemy, devil, get away from me. Mm -hmm. My God is pleading my case. He's executing justice. He is bringing me to the light and restoring my righteousness. So let's, we got to get in. I can't believe we've got nine minutes left. <laughs> we got to get to the point. All right, we have recognized our sin. There's been godly sorrow. We have confessed our sin, knowing joyfully that when we do, He forgives us of all sin and He cleanses us of all unrighteousness. But now's the most important mm -hmm. step. We got to change our conduct. Mm -hmm. So the process of repentance is turning away from sin to God. I mean, it's 180 degree. Mm -hmm. And I love this. J.D., would you read Acts 531? Because this is something I have learned to pray for. What does Acts 531 say? Him God has exalted to his right hand to be prince and savior, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin. Mm. Okay. Mm. What does that in scripture say to you? Mm. It, repentance is... A gift. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, you can't even repent on your own. Right. No. It takes God's grace. It takes the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. It takes God working in you to will and to do His good pleasure. So it's saying that when you ask God to forgive your sins, you know what? I also say, oh, Lord, help me repent. Mm -hmm. I pray for repentance. Mm -hmm. It's His gift. Give me the gift of repentance. Mm -hmm. Because some people confess feel good and do the same thing the next oh, day. Mm -hmm. Confess, feel good, and repeat the same pattern. Without that just, change, you're never truly repentant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just wonder what it's like to forgive your own self. Mm -hmm. I mean, That's can you do that? Yeah. If you understand God's love and God's cleansing, I think so. 
Well, I mean, that's him doing it to you. I mean, yeah, that, but I mean that's what, something that's, I mean, if you got the Holy Spirit that's working in you, then you've got that desire for mm -hmm. for, for difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you're sitting here and you're so stubborn or you're so prideful, well, I can handle that. Mm. You know, and then here you're just adding fuel to the fire. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I mean, yeah. Doesn't make a lot of sense. No, I know where you're going. <laughs> Let's la, read. Uh, um, do you want to read Curtis Romans 8, 13 and 14? Okay. It says, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, mm. these are sons of God. Mm. Mm. What if what a mm. mouthful here. Mm. So what we have is a juxtaposition. A juxtaposition is when you've got two contrasting statements that are butted up against one another oh, right in the same sentence here. If you live according to the flesh, die. what's your reward? Death. 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 Mm -hmm. the, the wages of sin is, is death. death. Mm -hmm. But if, if uh, by the Spirit mm -hmm. you put to death mm -hmm. the deeds of the flesh, you will live. The point is, it doesn't say if you put to death the deeds of the body, you'll live. It doesn't say if the Holy Spirit puts to death the deeds of your sins, you're going to live. See, God makes and keeps all the covenant promises. Then he asks us to enter into covenant relationship with him. When we're in covenant relationship, we understand his love. And guess what? We are motivated by love to walk in obedience. We are loyal to God. That's what it means to be in Christ. So now that you're in Christ, what does it say? If you're not led by the Holy Spirit, Spirit. you're not even a child of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But now that you're in Christ, you, it does take a cooperative effort because right. mm -hmm. God never forces us, right. does mm -hmm. he? Mm -hmm. So it's not going to be the Holy Spirit just saying, okay, J.D. Quinn, let's wash you up and throw you away here and or throw away everything. J.D. has to give him permission. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm but he has to work yeah. Yeah. with him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If by the spirit you put to death, but you can't do it without him, no. can you? Right. I'm also thankful that going, this is a, it's a process. It's not like, he's, I'm not saying you should obviously you give it to him, but it's, it's a process. Some, some things it takes a little longer. Oh, time. amen. And I'm thankful that he doesn't just go, okay, you didn't get it right. You're out, yeah. sorry, you're done, poof. Oh my goodness. Like, if, he, <laughs> if he dealt with the rebellious Israelites for 840 <laughs> years before allowing them to go into right. Babylonian captivity, and the only reason he did that was for redemptive purposes. <laughs> okay, so in Psalm 5110, what is David's cry? Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Constant. Oh, if you need to repent, yes. read Constant. Psalm 51. Mm -hmm. It is so amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Create. Did you know that word create right there in the Hebrew is bara? Bara. You know what bara means? It's the same word used in Genesis. It means to create something out of nothing. Mm -hmm. Only God can bara. Mm. The word bara is only used of God. And so if that's bara in me, a clean heart, oh God, can you create a clean heart in you? Mm -hmm. No. Can you renew a steadfast spirit within you? No. It's only by God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Philippians 2.13. Janelle, would you read that? It is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Mm. Don't you think those are kind of two stages? Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, to do. He changes your Works. will, your desire. Mm. 
And then again, he doesn't force you. Right. It's kind of like it works in you. He, works in you, yeah. he changes you. Then you got to take a step of faith, mm -hmm. and then the power of the Holy Spirit. Shows and hopefully, that. that's you know that's that hunger and thirst for Him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. You know, mm -hmm. if you hunger and thirst for Him, well, I think then the door will open. Okay. Mm -hmm. Who wants to read Acts three nineteen? We've only got a couple of minutes. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out so that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. You know what I love about this? It comes from him. Repent and be converted. Converted means to be turned back to God. Right. It's either to, to turn back for the, or to turn for the first time or turn back, but that your sins may be blotted out so mm -hmm. that anytime you see so that, this is a purpose statement. What happens? Times of refreshing come from the presence mm -hmm. of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is, that's the joy of repentance. And then I always have claimed this as, oh, well, for many years, I claimed this kind of like a life verse. Dara, you want to read Isaiah 30, 15? Sure. In returning to me and resting in me, you mm -hmm. shall be saved. Mm -hmm. In quietness and in trusting confidence shall be in quietness and in trusting, confidence shall be your strength. Amen. Isn't that Stand beautiful? Amen. When we return to Him, we rest in Him. We've got that quietness. We've got that mm -hmm. peace in our heart. So we want to invite you tonight. All of us need to understand mm -hmm. the joy of repentance. Amen. We've got to recognize our sin. We've got to let godly sorrow bring about repentance. We need to confess our sin. And when we do, oh, receive God's forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And Lord, help me repent so that you can turn away from that and experience mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. peace in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you, each and every yeah, one of blessing. you, for being here. And we're just so grateful that it's Sabbath. We want Amen. to thank mm -hmm. right. all of you at home for joining us. Our prayer for you is that the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit will be with you always. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath.